This Old House series is uh, sponsored by the Whatcom County Library, the Point Roberts branch, and the Point Roberts Historical Society. And uh, Bannock here has uh, videotaped them all. They're all available on YouTube. Oh, nice. so you can, anybody who misses today, you can, I've told all my relatives. <laughs> So today uh, we are going to feature the old waters home and the people that know most about that are uh, Barb Waters Schill, uh, Judy Butts, and Kathy Carlo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Barb and I and her sisters all went to school here together so that sort of is her setting. <laughs> And I'll let you ladies take it over from here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, well, we brought some pictures, um, and Kathy had some stuff, and I had some stuff, and we just put our stuff together, and we, we hope we've gathered enough people here and enough generations that you can ask questions and maybe get some answers. What we found out first and foremost was the grandma owned the property from the stop sign on South Beach Road and APA on the east side to the beach. She showed oh. the whole road. And Crystal Water Beach was the um, east entry. Okay? Um, Grandpa George did not buy the property. The property was given to him to settle a debt. Somebody owed him money at the water store. Um, and so to settle that debt, this man owned this property and they and we don't have any idea how much money that was. I mean, maybe it was ten dollars. <laughs> Uh, but they were married, George and Jean were married uh, September 19th, 1919. So this kind of happened in that um, time frame. Um, Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, not knowing more of the background, could you tell us a little bit more about where the Waters family came from and stuff like that and your background? Oh, that comes <laughs> oh, That's Kathy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a nice background too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know more about I've been doing um, ancestry and so I followed from uh, there was George Howard Watt, Howard Waters was mom's dad and there was a George Howard he was the second there was George Howard Waters the first and then there was a George Waters and the George Waters came from Ireland and whenever I've done ancestry I get stopped when I get to Ireland or Scotland or Norway um, I don't know whether their records just aren't on Ancestry yet or what, um, but through our great-great-grandmother, I followed the line all the way back to uh, the Viking days. So. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, George Waters came from Ireland. They were in New Brunswick. Um, I think maybe uh, some of the family early on um, must have, after the Revolutionary War, must have um, been uh, patriot or loyalists and so went into Canada um, after the war was over. And I think that's why they ended up in New Brunswick. It's just a guess. I don't have any papers to prove that. And um, then George Howard Waters I is the one that moved to Point Roberts. And um, I can't remember the date at present, but they came, uh, he came here, and um, when George Howard Waters II was uh, already born, because he was not born here, I don't believe, and they lived in different areas around the family, the area, and my grandmother, Jean Waters, or Jean Muir, um, came from uh, Vancouver. And you have more information on that's the mama. There's oh, yeah. I never knew my grandfathers. They were both gone by the time I was born. Yeah. <laughs> now that's your grandfather. That was George Howard the first. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. he died and Annie Kilgallen. Again, we haven't found traced her. She came from Ireland also, and. We, there were too many Annie Kilgallons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, unless I get to go over there and check it out, that's 
but um, yeah. And Grandma and Grandpa, Matt, Grandma was starting as a teacher in Vancouver or in oh, New West She was too, maybe somebody. And of course, back then, you got married and you could no longer teach. Because mm -hmm. no, no for teachers. And uh, so she, they lived, and then you can start with the, the, the little house and the big house. <laughs> so the, the house that's on the property now was not the original house. The original house was um, a small two-bedroom house, um, and it's in this picture here. It was moved to this part of the property um, so that the big house, what we all called growing up, the big house could be built. Um, we, Tootie remembers living in this house, and so I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna tell him that you were born in 24. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I think I just got disinherited. <laughs> so she remembers living in this house. So, and they were married in 1919. My dad was born in 21, and she was born in 24. So they probably lived in this house. And then when they decided to build the big house, which is the house you can all see on the property here. Um, they had to move that little house up farther, which they did. Um, we have a postcard that was sent to my dad from his parents, Jean and um, George, that says, um, how is the house coming? And we have the postmark as, as uh, 1928. So the house must have been being built in 28, 29, and must have moved in about that time. But we really don't know the finished date on this house. Tootie does remember moving into the house and not having it quite done. Um, the area off the kitchen was not uh, done. Oh, this is new owners. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are the latest owners. Yeah. Oh, me. Yeah. Um, then let's go to the... Excuse me, yeah. so which house is it? It is that house. It's hard to tell. It's this house. It's, uh, if you go down South Beach Road, you know where Water Street is? This person to the left? Yes. So, okay, so you, you yeah. go into Water Street and that great big gray house. Oh, yeah, okay, where Fred has his brush. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. Okay. yes, okay. Yes, okay. That house. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, okay. now I know where I am. All right. Okay. Oh, that house. All right. Um, the chicken ranch, uh, there was many chicken ranches and it grew and it started as a hobby for um, Grandpa George. And so he just kind of got interested, but it did grow to probably at least 12 outbuildings. And that's what you see in these pictures. You can kind of see these long buildings. So it was like going north. Going north. So the house would be here, and there's still a little lane that's not a blacktop road. It's kind of a gravel and mowed. And there was literally, you walked up and there was chicken houses all the way up. Mm -hmm. And he remembers that there was like the Bruder house and... They get 10,000 chickens. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Baby chicks every spring. Wow. Yeah. And what did she do with the... Well, she, they let, let them grow up and then they moved out. They were pullets and that's the next stage. And they moved out to the little houses up in the forest behind. We built a bunch of little houses up there. They were long gone though. They, they think they did that. And uh, they, no, they had the chickens for their eggs and she sold the huh. eggs. I just found out, was you told me, Barbara, that those eggs were sent to China. Yeah, somehow, <laughs> I, I had, I during the war. During the war, they yeah. were sent to somehow to the Bellingham um, cold storage. And I, I gotta find out, I can't remember where I read that, but. Um, huh. Yeah. And um, so. But she, Grandma, ran the chicken ranch pretty much other than the first three years because um, Grandma and Grandpa were divorced. Um, they separated in 32, and then um, there's a paper, let's see, that we have where he drilled over all the property to Grandma. Here, one of these? No, I think it's this one. Um, and um, it just says uh, George H. Waters uh, released this um, mortgage on the 10th day of November. Uh, well, this says 47, so this. 
anyway. Um, about 32, Grandpa wasn't around. He moved to Bellingham and then eventually to Portland. And so Grandma ran the chicken ranch pretty much by herself and uh, she always, hired. She always had a hard man. Mr. In the Heritage. House. Yeah, 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 the little house then became the place. For Mr. Heritage. Heritage was his name at one time. And then the second, was there a second one? Marshall. Marshall. Marsh. Marsh. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't ever live in the house, they had their own house, but yeah. they managed the chickens. They didn't have uh, down where <laughs> north, north of the reef. <laughs> they, they lived in uh, next to uh, Jeff uh, Martin, mm -hmm. the sheriff. They which would be uh, Brewster's. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and uh, let's see, then. <clears throat> so when that happened, Tootie from fifth grade on went to Vancouver, two schools, and my dad in high school went to uh, Bellingham and um, would be home in the summers. Tootie went up with her aunt and uncle, my grandmother's sister. There was two girls in the family. Mary Lou Wilson that lives in South Beach. Did you have dual citizenship then? Because did you have dual citizenship? Did you? Have to no, I, yeah, I guess I could have applied for it, but I wasn't interested. Right. Oh, so but there were no borders to going to school oh, no, or well, all open. No. <laughs> the first uh, no, Canadian first, there was an American border for a long time. First Canadian border was down 12th Avenue, a little brown house. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's the electric company today. Huh. You'll see the electric something game. Yeah. And Grandma subdivided. Well, she that. she sold. She decided that she yes. get out of the chicken business, and so she offered Jim and Thelma Marsh, the people who had been caring for the chickens, if they would wanted to buy the business, and so like she. Yeah. Yeah cut the property literally in half from the stop sign at APA to the beach. And the halfway point is basically Waters um, Road in from South Beach. And she sold that top half to him for $5,000. I thought I heard as a child growing up $1,500 and $2,500. So that's what <laughs> <laughs> Just family <laughs> um, and. Grandma thought that Jim and Thelma would continue to do the chickens. But in fact, Jim was an entrepreneur and he went and got a kid me on subdividing and oh, selling, which uh, just about did my dad. Yeah, I can remember my dad. I was in elementary school, I remember how my dad and he was a parent for selling the property. But, you know, life happens. Then when Jim did that, Grandma thought, aha, I can do the same thing. And so she did it on the south. Now, as a child growing up, she came to Point Roberts from Vancouver with her family um, to Boundary Bay um, and had lots of great memories. So when she subdivided, it was her desire to sell her lots to families with children that could enjoy the beach like she did as a child. So she set up these properties to be very inexpensive monthly payments for years so that they could afford to come down and buy a lot and um, build a little something on it. There was two things that Grandma hated about Point Roberts and which we called in our day the campers. Oh. Number one was outhouses. Most <laughs> of the camps in those days had outhouses. She hated that. So she put in her plan that you were not allowed to have an outhouse. You oh, had to be trailer. And then the trailer was the second thing. You were not allowed to bring a trailer down and let it just rust, which is what was happening to trailers in different places on Park Roberts. So those are the two things that she was pretty adamant about when she subdivided. So even today, you'll see that it's all houses, no um, prefabs, no trailers, no you know, whatever. Um, and so she subdivided, she, she dug that cut into the beach um, that's in Waters Platte and the stairs down and um, subdivided and uh, lived off that income for the remainder of her years. She died at 81. We have an article here of an 80th birthday that she had um, and with the house and um, it's kind of a little bit about her and 
the various things she did. When she gave up, my dad was in um, the grocery store business. Um, he kind of took over the water store. The family asked him to come down. It had been closed and to refurbish it and get it back going again, which he did. That was in Point Roberts? That was in Point Roberts on the west side, down across from the reef. That's not there now. And see, Grandma and Grandpa lived upstairs, and then downstairs was the store, and there was a stairwell from their house into the store. They didn't have to go outside. And, and so, was the post office there? And the post office was there at that time, too. The, our first grandfather was the postmaster, and his brother ran a boat called the Tulip, uh, which was the mail boat back and forth to Bellingham from Roberts. Oh. Connection. I've never oh, the tulip was the mail boat. Yeah. Not the first one, I don't believe. I think it was second. Yeah, Kitty did a picture of, Kitty Doyle did a picture of the tulip. Of the tulip. Yeah. Uh, don't see it here, we have it. Yeah. Um, anyway, my dad went out down and opened that store, and Grandma then went to work with him every day, which, which we all felt was a lifesaver for her living alone in that house. She was then back into the community. Seeing people on a regular basis and whatever. Um, then the Waters family decided they didn't want my dad in the store anymore, and his uncle, Uncle Walt Waters, um, who lived on Freeman Beach, there's a road over there called Walters Lane, that's Walt Waters. Um, he um, owned across the street what was called the Reef. It was just a cement block building. And it was a tavern. Um, remember, the dock was still there. The fishing boat still came in, and that's where they would have a beer at night, the fishing room, whatever. So he owned that. So he invited my dad to come across the street and join him. And my dad doubled the size of the building for the grocery store on one side. And they also brought the post office over. Um, we rented to the U.S. government, you know, space for the post office to be. And then um, the reef, the tavern. My mom at that time, then they opened a little restaurant in the reef. And we put a little, they put a little window in so people would come up and get a couple of hamburgers or whatever, and they go and eat them on beach during the day. And she made wonderful milkshakes. And she <laughs> <made them. laughs> we kids would deliver the um, flyers, the flyers oh. for Ken Shopping Center, oh. and we got paid with a hamburger and a milkshake <laughs> and any Irene stand. I wish you had carried on that. <laughs> <laughs> we still had a place. <laughs> now, uh, uh, also, Grandma went and another time and bought the beach rights uh, when the, the property tidelands. was left to her. Yeah, the Tidelands. Yeah, um, the property was left to her, didn't have beach rights. And we have a paper that shows that she paid six, we think it $600 for the beach rights in front of Waters Platt. Tidelands. So, and when you buy a piece of property, uh, I, at Waters Platte, you get one fifty-fifth of the beach rights because there's fifty-five lots there. So. Um, and, and I think that was short before she actually finished the subdivision. Yeah, it was like in nineteen fifty-four yeah. or five or yeah. something like that. So, you know, I used to. Um, Mom and Dad got married, and we lived in uh, Portland. I've lived in Portland, Oregon. All and, but we, my dad was a teacher, so we got, he got summers off, so we got to come up every summer and play with our cousins, and um, we, most of the time we were in the big house, because grandma didn't sell that the first time, and build one on the beach till, what was that, 60? 56 was, no, 66. 66, yeah, yeah. college. 66, yeah. Or in her own house, her oh. little house in the beach. Oh, yeah. She, she was, could no longer handle stairs. She broke her hip, and the yeah. stairs were too much. And so she went. She had the sister that the grandma's sister that she lived with and went to school with bought a, a lot in South Beach on the beach. And grandma had saved a lot next to them when she was mm -hmm. subdividing. And so she ended up building her small house down there. That house about. Five years ago, or something was moved off of that property. It's up kind of across the street from the cemetery now yeah. because somebody else bought and built another uh, two story house. But she had a small one story, so she could manage it with her, yeah. her walking. I've got a question. Sure. How was Annie Walters and Jean Waters related? 
Annie here? Yeah, Annie Annie was my mother's mother in law. Oh, okay. That was Jean's mother in law. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. And father in law. Okay. And okay. Because Jean is married into the Waters family. Okay. It's her husband that was the Waters. Okay. Yeah. Annie. All right, so you've got some pictures for people to look at. Yeah, you're and welcome to come up and look at any questions. questions and How about um, a, a peep from the people who live there now? Yeah. <laughs> well, we should tell you that we are really excited to have these people live here now. I just met her a month ago. They've only been there about a month or something. But they, they have, a very, you have a very interesting story about point, how you got to Point Robbins. Well, um, my, I rented a cottage in Beach about... 25 years ago, I guess, and my daughter met her husband, future husband there, because his family has been coming down for about 70 years to Crystal Beach. And it is funny how the Crystal Beach people don't know, as you know, the water is hot. This is, this is my son-in-law's aunt, her <laughs> yeah. Bar. Bar's brother has, and Bar both have a cottage down at Crystal Beach. So anyways, um, we have always liked down here and Julie and Tyler my daughter and son-in-law love it down here so when I was thinking about getting a cottage with my mom we were looking at Sunshine Coast we were looking at the Gulf Islands and we thought if we don't go to Point Roberts we'll never see our children, <laughs> our children. and so originally we thought we would go to Seabright Farm and we were hoping to get something there but it has taken a long time as everybody here probably knows to get permits and whatnot and all of a sudden this house came on the market and, and we it had actually been on the market for a couple of months, but somehow we had never seen it because we'd been constantly looking. And then uh, Julie uh, phoned me up one evening, like literally about nine o'clock at night on a Friday night, and she said, "This house is for sale." And she had looked at; she'd actually tried to rent it a couple of summers, but it was always fully rented. So I emailed the um, realtor and said, "Could we see it maybe tomorrow?" And she wrote back, "Sure." So we all went down the next day and immediately thought, this is what we need because my, this is my mom, Ruth, and um, my, my mom always wanted a cottage, but she married a man who wanted to boat. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, my dad died a couple of years ago, and so mom was ready to get a cottage. <laughs> and so um, we decided that we found things to do. My husband died also a few years ago, so we were, it was perfect for both of us to get a cottage that we could all use. And I have a brother in Ireland, or England, a sister in Ireland, and a brother in California, all of them with children, grandchildren, and they like to come home every summer, so we need a big house. So last night we were 12 people, I think, staying the night there, and um, it's been like that, for, it'll be like that for most of the summer, though. It, we'll be using all of it. It's perfect. It's a beautiful house. Honestly, the bones of it are so gorgeous. So I have to come over and have a look. Yeah. It's been Love completely <laughs> redone, which is a real bonus for us. The people we bought it from had purchased it thinking they would live there forever. And they made, they've made it like a real city house. And then he got a job in Seattle, mm -hmm. and then they thought, well, we'll keep it as our vacation house. But it was too far. It'd come all the time on weekends or anything else. So that's, we were very lucky. We got to buy it from them after they had it all redone. It was lovely. Really nice. How many owners has that house? Right? And I was trying to think about that. So Grandma would be first, and Max and Ruby White bought from Grandma. Yeah. Yeah. Then who bought from Max and Ruby? There was I think it was a John something or other, and Pam. And yeah, Pam's. you know any Pam's? Yeah, it was her. And I don't know if it's spouse or special friend, but but yeah. they were in it for a while, and then the the couple that she's talking about from yeah. her oh, or in it, and now she's. No, there many then. There's really only been five. Yeah. Wow. Five yeah. yeah. owners. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Was there an Aga stove in there? Do you remember? Something a what? There had been an Aga. Big What's Aga. Aga? No, there's yeah. a British chef. Yeah. yeah. British uh, kitchen stove. Was there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but she cooked, Grandma cooked with wood in the. Um, the maid that so told us so. we met last weekend. She said that it had been a B and B. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she'd gone and stayed there when it was a B and B, and they had this wonderful big aga 
In the kitchen? In the kitchen, yes. Oh. There are these fabulous big stoves that last forever. And I can't imagine <laughs> somebody pulling it out, but it's not there now. Oh, oh too bad, because they're beautiful stoves. Hmm. Mother also had beside the stove a, a phoenix she could roll down into the basement and they could load it with wood and then roll it The basement was filled with sawdust. I love walking down to the basement because that's what she cooked with. Really? No, she didn't cook with that. She, she, oh, that she was that heated. Yeah. Heated yeah. the sawdust. Yeah. But the whole basement downstairs it was just the big pile of sawdust. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was yes. only in the one corner. Yeah. Well, uh, I remember. Oh. It. <laughs> I remember it as with the child's eyes. <laughs> yeah. There's another room yeah. down there, and the whole left side of where the stairs came was all the laundry and all that oh, stuff. Oh, back oh, I mean, okay, and that's, what it, is. <laughs> that's what it is still, still the laundry is laundry. on that yeah. side. Yeah. 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 I'd like to just share some memories so, of yeah. earlier times when I was growing up and um, we, the, the big house stood in the uh, huge field, there were no other houses around, mm -hmm. and it was just beautiful. And we used to keep our cows there at degrees. Mm -hmm. And I would, um, six o'clock in the morning, to round them up to bring them home to milk. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. it was the most beautiful sight. Uh -huh. Just the view from there and the whole mm -hmm. landscape was mm -hmm. so gorgeous mm -hmm. before any houses were built. Yeah. But I also remember Jean really well when she used to be in her kitchen house cleaning eggs hour after hour. And as kids, when we were little, we used to stop and visit her. She was always so nice to us. Aww. Aww. Yeah, we, we, we spent hours in the, the fields in front yeah. of the house because it was tall grass. Yes. So we were always building <laughs> forts, yeah. and sneaking around, and we weren't allowed to go onto the beach until Mom and Somebody, yeah. Irene came down with us. Mm -hmm. It was always yeah. after yeah. lunch we had to wait. Not one blackberry, if those of you know the problem. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Not really? one blackberry yeah. in the whole field. Um, really? Yeah. Well, anywhere. Hmm. This is this picture is a really old picture. Um, I think it was from the 40s, but somebody was standing on the top of the port cocher looking down at the fishing boats. And so that's when you talk about being nothing, there's nothing there. The only building you see right here is the big white house, which is South Beach House, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then the little lights that you see are fishing boats. Oh, that's wow. wonderful. Yeah. So neat. There you see it. the beauty of the seen early in the morning to all the fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really yeah. spectacular. Yeah. There was a dock out of yeah. South Beach House. Yeah. Yeah. Boats could dock, could anchor mm -hmm. and come in part of South Beach House on the left corner. It's hard to see now, but there's three round yes. windows. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was the store. Mm -hmm. And the restaurant book didn't exist. Yes. I mean that building didn't exist. So it was just the White House. And that was the store. And then you guys live in wasn't that a fisherman's place, a bunkhouse kind of thing? <laughs> From what we heard, bunkhouse used to be on that side. And then we're at 699 South Beach Road, we're on the corner across from the field. And that house apparently got moved over to where it is today. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know. But when we bought it, it was a duplex. So. Are you talking about um, where to go straight from us? The, the one down the from the light right across from us? Mm -hmm. For me. Yeah. Right across yeah. from Mars. Right across from me now. Oh, it faces yeah. the beach yeah. and it was next to the nice mm -hmm. house behind it that the guy always landscaped. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking about the black, white block house, uh -huh. Stanley Thorsonson built that. They lived in uh, that cannery place for a lot of years. Uh -huh. hmm. Actually, right now, this year, I noticed you can see the tops of the posts from the piers mm -hmm. down the South Beach. Some oh, some years you don't see it, but huh. right now, if you go down in front of South Beach store, there's two ends of piers that are sticking up out of the sand. It didn't last very long. Mm -hmm. Low time. <laughs> longer than our new one? Yeah. <laughs> Much longer than the new one. Yeah. Oh, the people like to come and look at the pictures and the documents. Oh, yeah.